What's up y'all? In today's video, I will show you guys how to make a table with pagination. Now, we are going to be grabbing data from an NBA API, and we will render the data to fill our table. And we are going to be using a third-party tool to complete this tutorial. It's called React Bootstrap Table 2. And this is what the final result is going to look like right here, where we have a table where we're grabbing data from the API, and we can filter out results right here and we can use these arrows right here to go through all of the results and without further ado let's get into this i'm going to assume that you already have a react app made if you don't go ahead and make one and the first thing we'll do is go into our source folder and into the app.js file and i'm going to refactor this code I'm just going to minimize this there we go let's just get rid of this header content right here we won't need any of that and let's edit this function to be es6 so const app there we go. All right, let's install all of our dependencies. So I'm gonna create a new terminal right here and I'll just do npm i. This is the first one, so I'm gonna react bootstrap table two, paginator, react bootstrap table next. And the last one is gonna be react bootstrap Oops, bootstrap and I'll just do dash dash save and let that work its magic all right so there's three links in the description below that will take you to installing our CSS for our packages and the first one I'm gonna go to is the getting started for just the regular table too if you scroll down a little bit you'll see this import right here I'll just copy that go back into our visual studio code and inside of our index.js I'll just put paste it right here and I'm gonna go back into there go to the second one copy this one go back to our visual studio code paste it and the last one is for our bootstrap so right here I'm just going to copy this bad boy right here go into our visual studio code I'll import it right there and now we also have to import this link so I'll just copy this and this is just going to go into our index.html so it's our public folder, index.html, and I'll just put it right here. Cool. Uh, see, I also forgot to install Axios, so I'll just do npm i Axios, and let that happen. Since we have our app running, we can just minimize the terminal all the way. And let's go back into our app.js, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables, two use state variables. The first one is going to be for players, and the other one is going to be for our uh, loading feature for API. So we'll just do players and set players. It'll be a use state. Whoops. There we go. And the next one's going to be loading and set loading. Use state. And just set it to false. And right inside of this React, I'm also going to have to import use state and use effect. All right, so now I'm going to create a function that is going to be responsible for grabbing data from our API. So let's do a const, let's call it get player data async. And right in here, we'll do a try catch block console.log e if there's an error and let's do const data is equal to await axios.get and the url for that is just going to be https double slash nba players dot heroku app dot com slash players stats See, it was a little bit weird because a couple of days ago, this wasn't even working, but it seemed to be working again, so I figured why not just use it. There are different uh, APIs that I'll link in the description below, but this one I like because it's just easy. And let's do console.log data, and let's just see all the data we can get. And let's also call the function and use effect. So let's just do use effect. And I'll add an empty array block right there. And right here, I'll just do call the function, get player data, save that bad boy. And let's go back into our React app. Access is not defined. Let's define it, right? We've got to define it. So import 
Axios from Axios. There we go. Let's go back to our app. Let's open up our console log. We go into our console and we'll see we have an oops, we have an object. Inside the object we have 491 objects worth of data. There's a lot of data. Let's take this data and let's put it on a table. Alright, let's go back into our app and let's import all the things we need. Cause uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. because uh, I sort of forgot to do that earlier. So import bootstrap table from react bootstrap table next and the next one let's do import page uh, I can never spell this right pagination I think factory from react bootstrap paginator that sounds like from Phineas and Ferb where Doofenshmirtz always said nator at the end of his devices anyways uh, import all as react bootstrap from react bootstrap and now let's go down now let's create our columns and target the data that we want so I'm gonna create a const columns and inside of here I'm gonna add an array and since we want three columns I just want a name points per game and their team name I'll just do for the first object it'll be data field F I E L D and I'll just do name text text the name the text we're gonna add for a column I'll just do player name now you might be wondering what is this name how did I get to this name if we go back into our app and we open up our data one of these individual items right here we can basically set using data field we can target the specific key and get its value so if I wanted let's say um, games played I would just instead of typing name right here I would just put in games underscore played so let's put in everything else we need so we have player name next one let's just copy this and paste this three times and next one we want is points per game and let's do points per game and for this one I'll do team name and let's we'll call it player team now let's try and render our table so right inside our return right here I'm going to target our bootstrap import right here bootstrap table with a self closing brace and I'm gonna add a key field with just name data at uh, oops players columns at columns and pagination at pagination factory as a function cool and if we save it we go back into our app we'll see that we have no data what the hell let's go back into our app are we oh see we're not even setting our data whoops my bad so let's set players right here to data dot data and let's save it to see if that works nice there we go so now we have some data appearing with our pagination right here with the filter let's say we want 50 we have 50 results and we can use these arrows right here to go through different players nice all right before we continue and we make our loading screen for api and everything let's talk about what we just did right inside of here and um, let's start off with key field right here so key field is simply targeting the unique id inside of the array of objects data so in our case we have um, let's go back into our app real quick and we open up our console log let's open up this one right here we'll see that we have a specific id and that id is name um, usually in an actual application you would have an id for each of these um, objects but in our case since we don't have it since this api didn't allow for that we're just using our name as our unique indice uh, unique id i mean and the next one is data data is just simply accessing our data from our players array right here the next one is columns columns is just creating our columns from our array of objects right here this 
a variable of columns. And the next one is pagination. That's just grabbing, uh, importing pagination factory right here, just using that. And that just covers basically everything for our table right here. All right, cool. Now let's make our spinner for our API. So if, let's say, our API takes a little bit longer to load, we don't want to just show nothing. For a good user experience, we would at least want to show some sort of loading screen. So I will do a ternary operator targeting loading. And the first one we'll do is insert our bootstrap table right inside of this, um, inside of these parentheses. Or if it's not that, then we will create our spinner. So I'm just gonna grab the regular spinner. So just react bootstrap dot spinner with a self closing brace. Inside of here, I'll do an animation is equal to border. And if we just save that, we go back into our app, we will see that we have a whoopsies, why is that not working? Hmm, let's go back. What I mess up? What I do wrong? Oh, right, we also need to set loading. Ah, oh, man, I have a problem with not setting things. All right, so set loading. If the data is received, we want to set the loading to true. So right here, we're just saying that if it's true, we want to show the table. If it's false, we just want to show the animation of the loading screen. We refresh the page and we'll see. Oh boy, that's so fast. Okay. <laughs> and I will just really quickly, we can see that we have a spinner right there. But the API loads so damn fast. All right, so that concludes this tutorial of learning how to create a table with pagination. I truly hope this tutorial helped you guys out. If it did, please be sure to give this video a like, a comment, and if you aren't already subscribed, be sure to, and I'll see y'all in the next one.